this first module, you will learn how to model multibody systems made of bodies and joints solely submitted to gravity. Tree-like means that from a morphological point of view, those multibody systems look like a tree, starting from the ground with a trunk, branches, and even leaves at the end. A pendulum hanging from the ceiling, a robot manipulator manipulating a load, or even the human arm represent typical examples of multibody systems. A tree-like multibody system is in fact a succession of joints and bodies which represent kinematic chains. Body eye is connected to other bodies in the system and especially to its parent H via joint H and to children bodies, in this case body J via joint J and body K via joint K. Joints represent devices that allow relative motion between bodies. They can be revolute motion, they can be prismatic motion. Hinges, sliders represent some kinds of joints. The internal motion within these joints will represent the degrees of freedom of the multibody system. The first step of the study is to identify and number the bodies of the system we would like to analyze to decide whether or not a body must be taken into account in the envisaged study. Let's take for example the bicycle, for which we would like to analyze the stability. Surely the frame, including the saddle, the two wheels and the front fork must be present in the model. However, one can question the usefulness of taking into account, let's say, the pedal crank, the pedals, or the chain links. Let's take, for instance, the ball bearing on the front, on the wheel hub. The balls can, of course, be disregarded in the global analysis of the bicycle. And thus, the front part of the system only consists of the steering fork and of the wheel connected by a single degree of freedom joint. Let us come back on body I, in this example, connected to its parent age via a joint and connected to two children, J and K, in this case. Each body is characterized by geometrical data and dynamic data. Each joint between bodies defines two anchor points. The anchor points on body I are, in this example, O prime I for joint I, OJ for joint J, and OK for joint K. These uh, connecting points will be uh, connected through geometrical vectors on body I respectively denoted D, J for the first one and D, K for the second one. They represent the geometrical data associated to body I. The dynamic data associated to body I are, of course, the mass, denoted Mi, the center of mass, denoted Gi, and located via a vector called Li. And of course also the inertia tensor I, I, and all the vector and tensor uh, data are expressed in a body 
fixed frame located at the body center of mass. A joint represents any mechanical device that confers a relative motion between two bodies. It can be a hinge, a slider, a ball joint, a cardon joint or whatever. Joints are connected to bodies through anchor points, typically for joint I, point OI on parent H and point O prime I on body I. At this point are computed the forces and the torque acting between these two bodies under the form of a resultant vector denoted Fi for the force acting from the parent to the body I at point OI and Li for the pure torque between these two bodies. Within a joint, motion can take place under the form of a relative displacement and they can be either a prismatic motion or a linear motion giving rise to a linear displacement or it can be a revolute motion giving rise to a rotational motion between the bodies. The relative motion within joints will define our joint generalized coordinates denoted Q. Their unit will be meter for a linear displacement and radian for a revolute angular displacement. They will represent our system variables and will be of course expressed at position, velocity and acceleration levels. For a tree-like multibody system, the number of degrees of freedom will be exactly equal to the number of generalized coordinates. Frames and notation associated with body and joints will be detailed later on in the module. Well, now, based on the Newtonian mechanics laws, various formalisms can be used like Newton Euler recursive techniques, virtual principles, Lagrange equation, to obtain the equations of motion of the tree-like multibody system, given its topology and given the data associated to joints and bodies. Considering a multibody system described in terms of relative joint coordinates, these equations can be written in the following form. In which M stands from the mass matrix of the system, C gather all the external forces and torques, gyroscopic terms, centripetal terms, Coriolis terms, and Q, especially when we are using relative coordinates, represent the projection of the joint force and torque in the direction of the joint, and so they are called the generalized joint forces. So, the equations of motion are, of course, differential equations that now can be used for any subsequent numerical analysis, namely time integration for this first module. The goal being to compute the positions and the velocities at time t plus dt thanks to a numerical time integrator starting from the accelerations and velocities computed at time t. So now enjoy using Robotron or any kinds of multibody system software for module number one.